Hi guys, I'm Chris, that's Hannah, and we are Albion Creations. Today we're going to show you how we made the Shepherd's Journal from Disney's Atlantis. But it's not just a prop. Because at cons you can never have enough pockets, pouches or utility belts, if your prop can be hollow it can also function as snack storage. You can never have enough snack storage at a con, trust me on that. You can customise the inside to suit your specific needs. I've put in a card holder for my debit cards and cash, um, a little shelf to stop my phone rattling around and everything else is for snacks. We tried to keep it a really simple build. Uh, materials wise, it's 8mm foam, 2mm craft foam, uh, wooden doweling, foam clay and cardboard. You also need some acrylic paints. Uh, tools wise, really simple, usual culprits. A sharp knife, some contact cement, some super glue and a rotary tool is helpful but not 100% necessary. Anyway, on to the build. When making a prop it can be useful to make a mock-up first. We made ours out of cardboard so that we could rescale it as necessary. Once we were happy with the scale, we used 8mm EVA foam and cut out the pattern pieces, then used contact cement to create a box. The V-shaping of the sides was done by cutting halfway through the foam and folding it accordingly. Then we made a lid for the box and hatched it with a 2mm craft foam hinge by gluing it together on the inside. To create the cover of the journal, we first size it out of cardboard and then cut out a slightly larger craft foam rectangle to allow for folding at the spine. To make the craft foam look like leather, we scrunched out some tin foil and then ironed it on top of the craft foam. This takes some time and the tin foil can get quite hot, so use heat protective gloves in a well ventilated area. Simply iron the tin foil on top of the craft foam and repeat until the entire rectangle looks like this. This also has the benefit of heat sealing the foam. Once you're happy with the leather look and it's cooled down, glue the foam to the cardboard pattern to allow room for folds at the spine. This helps ensure rigidity and sharp corners. This will also allow you to see the size of the book and you can cut the dowel for the spine and decoration accordingly. You want about 1.5 to 2cm extra on each end so you can attach the end bits. Then you can create the spine toppers using foam clay. We found it easier to draw out the size of the topper so you can compare your sculpting. You want to create an angled semi-sphere and then attach a very small sphere on the ends. Roll out some thin cylinders of foam clay and then twist two together to create the braiding detail. If this is too thick you can gently roll out the braid until it reaches an appropriate size. Gently attach the braid to the base of the semisphere and leave to dry. Using the paper template, cut out the cover decoration, leaving a half inch seam allowance on the outer edge. This is so it can be folded over the cardboard, creating a smooth edge, and also leaving half an inch where it attaches to the spine, so you can wrap it around the dowel later. Drum with the box to smooth out any joins and remove the point at the hinge to allow for easier attachment later. Heat treat everything except the leather look book cover as this can remove the texture you spent ages putting in. Glue the outer edges to the front and back of the book cover and then fold it over the edges and secure. Trim the corners where necessary.
Returning to the book pages, draw some guide marked lines to help show where the pages are going to be. If you're using white foam, try and avoid using blue ink as it is a nightmare to paint over. Life hack. Using the cutting disc on a rotary tool, follow the guidelines at various depths. As this is a handmade journal rather than a modern bound book, it's okay to have different thicknesses. Using the excess foam from earlier and superglue, attach the dowel to the detailing. Trim the excess foam on the back. After super glue, attach the Atlantean A on the front of the book. Try and keep it centered and use your reference images. To create the impression of rivets, use a metal straw to imprint into the foam. You could also use googly eyes, but from a side view of this book, they aren't very raised. Attach the foam clay spine detailing using super glue. Glue the book cover to the inner book, one side at a time. It was easier to glue the lid on when the book was open than closed. Find an old ballpoint pen and cut the inner ink tube into two lengths. Using craft foam, cut out three rectangles that can wrap around these lengths with enough extra foam to glue onto the end of your prop and to cover the full thickness of the book. Depending on how your foam reacts to heat, whether it shrinks or expands, you may want to add a slightly larger allowance to let the hinges move smoothly. Glue the two end pieces and wrap them fully around your tube, leaving a gap for the middle piece to slot into. Once these are fully dry, feed the two tabs from your middle section through the gaps and carefully glue the ends of the tab back onto the middle section. Ensure you do not glue the middle section to the tube. If you need more rigidity, you can glue some card to the inner side of the hinges for more strength. Once fully dried, trim any excess to square off the hinge, then heat treat the hinge and using a metal straw and the back of a knife, score in your details. Using your preferred glue, attach one end of the hinge to your prop and at the other end some way to open and close your book. We used magnets, but you can also use velcro, purse snaps, press studs, etc. To ensure your book remains closed, you can also add further support such as smaller magnets in the corners. Because this prop is acting as a bag, we wanted to add some internal components that would be useful if we were to take it to a convention. 
We glued some craft foam into a card slash money holder and then created a shelf that could stop Hannah's phone from sliding around. Any leftover room is for snacks. It's now time for priming, which as always was done with Gorilla Wood Glue. Because we didn't want to lose any of the surface detailing in the leather, we only used a single coat. The journal was then painted with acrylics, starting with a dark brown for the cover. If you're ever painting something that you want to mimic metal, it's useful to paint it black first, which helps the colour pop. We used silver for the metal edging and gold for the spine and front detailing. The edges were first painted with several layers of white. Because of the blue ink we needed to cover this quite thickly. And then we mixed in a very small amount of brown and yellow to get an aged look. Finally a watered down brown wash was used to create some depth. Congratulations, you've done it! Really hope that helped. As always, the free patterns available on our website, we'll drop a link for that down below. If you do end up making anything with our patterns, please tag us so we can see your awesome stuff. We'll be back next month. I'm not quite sure what we're making, it's been a really weird year. Um, <laughs> if there's anything specifically you'd like to see us make, or if there's any techniques that we've used that you want to elaborate on, just drop a comment down below. If you enjoy our videos, do the usual YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, follow us on various social media. If you want to see our work in progress pictures, follow us on Instagram. If you want to see our random ramblings, we do have a Twitter. I have a Twitter, Chris is afraid of it and that is completely fair and valid of him. See you next time guys.